In this video, we're going to look at a problem that actually we're going to look at a couple times throughout this this unit. Um, and so uh, let's let's dive in. So we're taking a test, and we're going to assume there's two types of questions. Let's call them say type A and type B. So maybe it's like free response and multiple choice or something like that. We've got two types. We don't know what they are, but two types of problems. It takes three minutes to complete a question of type A and six minutes to complete a question of type B. Total time allowed for the test is 60 minutes, and you're also not allowed to answer more than 16 questions. So we need to write and then graph a system of inequalities. Um, that way we can identify the region of feasible solutions. Okay, so let's take the, let's, let's try to actually figure out what are the variables here. So we've got um, two types of questions, right? The two types of questions, type A and type B. And so I'm going to let um, X equal the number of questions I answer um, of type A. And we're going to let Y equal the number of questions of type B. Uh, could, could have chosen little a and little b here, maybe that'd be better, but whatever. Okay, and so we have two restrictions put on here. We've got a total amount of time, so we've got a time restriction, and then we have also have a number of questions we can answer restrictions. So we have two inequalities. Okay, one of the inequalities is going to be about time, and one of them is going to be about um, number of questions. So um, if we're not allowed to answer, may not answer more than 16 questions, then when I know when I take x, the number of questions I answer of type a, plus y, the number of questions I answer of type b, I know that has to be less than or equal to 16, right? I can't answer more than 16 questions. So there's one of my inequalities. So this is my number, this is my restriction on the number of questions, restrictions. So my inequality, that's that restriction. And then I have one about time. So it takes three minutes every time I answer a question of type A. So three times the number of questions. I'm going to spend three times X on type A problems. And I'm going to spend six times Y. That's the amount of time it'll, spend, it'll take if I answer Y many type B questions, right? And that total amount of time has to be less than or equal to 60. So this is my time restriction inequality. Okay, so I have two inequalities, and I want to graph them. Let's notice that they're both in standard form. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here and remind you that um, standard form of a line, line, of course, that would be when it's equals, but is AX plus BY equals C. And there's many ways to graph a line, right? So one, one thing we could do is we could convert this into Y equals MX plus B or slope intercept form um, and just convert it so that we can find the slope and the intercept. But um, one of the more convenient ways to, to graph, so graph, this graphs easily by finding both intercepts. Okay, so let me demonstrate what I mean by that. Um, so say we're trying to graph the line x plus y equals 16. I'm going to make it equals temporarily. If I want to know the um, x-intercept, I let x equal 0, right? Because that's when it crosses the, um, I'm sorry, I'm saying that the wrong way. That's going to be the, the y-intercept, sorry. Okay, so if we let x equals 0, this is going to be the y-intercept. Right, x is zero, so we sort of cover it up. Um, I don't really have a way to cover it up nicely, but like, so imagine just covering up x, and what's left is y equals 16. So we know we have when x is zero, y is 16. And then the other way to uh, find the, now the x-intercept, sorry, I said that wrong earlier. So if we let y equal zero, so this will be the x-intercept. Again, just sort of imagine covering up with your hand the y value because it's zero. We see x equals 16, so we get when x is 16, y is 0. So we could plot these two points, and I'm going to just plot them quickly, right? 0, 16, and over here, 16, 0. And if we connect those with a line, we're going to have the equation x plus y equals 16. We're looking for the inequality x plus y as being less than or equal to 16. So you, we know that this line divides the plane into two parts. One half of it is going to be the solution, and the other half will not be the solution. So we could pick any value we want. So usually we pick something like 0, 0. If I pick 0, 0, is it true that 0 plus 0 is less than or equal to 16? 
And sure, 0 plus 0 definitely is less than or equal to 16. And so 0 is in the solution half of the plane. So this whole thing is um, the inequality. x plus y is less than or equal to 16. Let's look at the other inequality. I don't have much room left. Let's change colors here. Um, so now let's say I want to graph um, 3x plus 6y is less than or equal to 60. And again, let's just look at the actual line itself first. So to find, uh, we're going to find the y-intercept. We let x equal 0. And again, if x is 0, we sort of just imagine covering that up because it's gone, right? x times 3 would be just 0. So what's left? How do I solve this? I just have 6y equals 60. So dividing by 10, I'm sorry, dividing by 6, we see y is 10. So we have um, the y-intercept is 0, 10. And if I want to easily find the x-intercept, I let y equal 0. So that's going to sort of cover up that term, right, because it's gone because it's 6 times 0. And so now I'm just left with 3x equals 60. So if I divide both sides by um, 3, I'm going to get, uh, so when uh, y is 0, x will be 16. Sorry, no, not 16. Divide them by 3, so that would be 20. 20. Sorry about that. Okay, so if I try to quickly sketch this line over here, uh, uh, 20 comma 0 is going to be some point over here, 20, 0. And, but 0, 10 is going to be somewhere less here. So we're going to have a line something like this. And again, if we're trying to look at actually the inequality where these values are less than, so, so let me go back to over here, so that one I've messed up. Um, 3x plus 6y is less than or equal to 60. We pick a point. So again, we know that this blue line has cut the plane into two halves, one half being in the solution and the other half not the solution. So if we let x equal 0, 0, we certainly see that 0, 0, 0 plus 0 is less than 60. So we get uh, this portion over here. And so what is the feasible region? Uh, we need a new color. How about purple? Because that's the mix of red and blue. We're going to have this little region here. Okay, this is going to be our feasible region, um, or this, the, the region of the feasible solutions. And what does this mean in terms of this problem? Well, these are all of the ordered pairs. Remember, what does a solution mean in general? It means it's, these are all the ordered pair values that will make the equation, both equations, both inequalities, I should say, true. Okay, so to see this a little bit better, actually, I'm going to pull up um, a graph that I made in Desmos. Um, so here's the graph, which is a much nicer picture of these two curves. Um, and unfortunately, I have the colors backwards from what I did on my, my notes, but that's okay. So, um, and I'll also, so I use Desmos. So in fact, can I slide over? Uh, let me see if I make this smaller. There, now you can see um, the equation. So the way Desmos works is you can type in the equations like this, but um, I only wanted to have positive values because X and Y both represent the number of questions we're going to answer. So it wouldn't make sense to actually shade in the rest of this. Or really, this purple region here is the region of feasible solutions. And so it has corners here, and 0, 0 would be one of those corners. OK, but again, what does this mean? This means, for example, like pick the point 5, 5. 5, 5 is in this, the region of feasible solutions right it's in this purple region so that means that if I answered five questions of type A and five questions of type B that would be that would meet the criteria that would be less than answering less than 16 questions and it would take me less than the 60 minutes and so any ordered pair combination in here so if I pick for example four comma seven, right? I can answer four questions of type A, seven questions of type B. That would fall under the time restriction and also under the number of question restriction. If I pick some over here, like say I want to do, um, in fact, even right on the boundary, right? If I want to answer 16 questions of type A and zero questions of type B, that still is in this purple region. Okay, so that is what the um, region of feasible solutions means in this context, and that's how we can graph it.